All right, you're going to need to pull the snap ring out of the pressure plate here. Or the, uh, for our bearing. It's just going to slide out there. Uh, it's best practice to go ahead and replace this snap ring here. They do get deformed a little bit. So, I'll be picking up one of those sometime this week, hopefully, or whenever I go back together with it when I'm ordering transmission parts. Uh, let me grab some sockets here. All right, so what you got here, the clutch nut, I already took it out here. It's an inch and three sixteenths, and it's it's left hand thread. So you need a compensating sprocket over here, or front motor sprocket. It's not really a compensating sprocket, it's just front sprocket. It's regular left hand threads. Now you want to block this off using the tool to get it off of there with. And it, this, this size is an inch and eighth. If you can get them, use a six point deep well. Works better than a 12 point. So let's see how tight this thing was. Because I've never had it off of here. So not really too terrible tight to get off of there. Let me pull this off here and we'll show you what's behind there. <clears throat> and I'm not really doing it right now, but there's a way to check your shift and fall adjustment. This thing is adjustable. Pull hole right here. Then you put this in third gear and you stick a eighth inch drill bit in there. Measure the shifter ball and then you loosen this and be able to adjust it till it's just right in there. I've already adjusted this one, but we'll have to adjust it again when we take it out or when we go back together with it. So that'll be in the going back together video. Let's go ahead and pull this off. Now, earlier ones, if you see your stick shift star here, this one's pointed a lot more. They changed this, I want to say, and I can't remember. 99, 2000, 98, somewhere in there. This style, earlier one, these were really rounded off. They still use the same clip to hold on with. Which is kind of a goofy design. What I did before was what I did before with these was take this pen right here. Yeah, took the shift drum out, and then I'd stick this in stick the shift drum in the lathe and machine this off, and then put a stud back in here where I could use a lock nut on the end of it. Kind of recess this a little bit and use a like a half nut, tighten it on there instead of using this shift drum clip. It kind of lets it move around a little bit, just a tighter fit. But uh, let me pull this thing off here. Pop these off here. And when you're going back together with this, you're probably going to replace these lock nuts here. These are just nylocks. Nylocks are like single use only, so best idea to go ahead and replace them. Got a little washer on here. You need to put those back on too. They make a special tool for this clip here. Put it back on and to take it off. Well, to put it back on anyway, but. We're just going to knock it off with the screwdriver and we'll have to get another one to put back on there. So as you know, clips, single use only. Really, or should be. Something you should be doing. It's usually a dealer only item. So you probably need to contact your dealer to make sure they actually have them. Or when you're ordering parts to go back together three, four years ago, whatever it was. They tend to use parts for a really long time. All right, so I've got my clip off, star off of there, pull our shifter off of there. And you want to look at the area here for wear on the shifter pole there. And I believe you can still get this piece separately. 
and it's just held on with a flip right there. Give it a good inspection on the edges here for wear, and you'll be able to see it. If you got any roughness or splinters like this one's got, so I'll be getting another one of these. I don't know if you can see it really good. Got like a wear mark on the side of it there. Down in the trough, I guess you'd call it trough. I don't, I don't know what else. I could see a little splinter with my finger too, where it's worn on the back side here. I'll need that little arm too. Or I may or may not need it. I'm putting one on there. Or I'm ordering one. And since you're that far, this is your detent right here. It just kind of holds the shift star. Good idea to go and feel it, see how much play you got in there. If it's got too much play, it's on a stud. But we'll pull the transmission on. I'll pull this off there, depending on how far we need to go. Check the, check the fit on. I don't know what the spec is, but I mean, you can feel it. It's got too much play in it. You don't really want it on a play in there and it's it's not on a bearing it's just aluminum riding on a steel stud all right and i'm just going to use a half inch socket on these to go all the way through the case with the right case aft now if it doesn't come right out you can use a crow for crow's foot under the edges here to pull it out so before i go look for a crow's foot see if I can actually get it out of here. Oh yeah, it fell right out. And that's our transmission there. It's really jumping out yet. Second. That's third. Yeah, this first gear right there. This first the dog's there. We'll have to pull it apart so you can see it. Like right on the edge of the dogs. I'll have to pull it apart to show you what a dog is. Dog's a little thing sticking out on the gear towards the side there. Those are dogs. And when they slide, they go into a pocket, which is right here. If they're rounded any, like this one is first gear slightly rounded right there. I'm going to have to pull up, shift drum and shift forks off of there first. It's going to seem like a little overkill here, but this thing's pretty damn tight. And it's greasy, so oily, I can't get a good grip on it. There we go. If you look right here... Yeah, look right there, me dropping shit all over the place. That's your detent. Right there. I don't remember me telling you about the stud. It just rides directly in that stud right there. And then that little uh, plate is what actually holds the shift drum in there. We're just going to slide it back together. Get it too, too mixed up here. And again, you want to replace that eye lock right there. And then to get the shift drum out, I have to pull the, pull the uh, cotter pins out of here. There's three cotter pins holding the shift forks in there. And then there's a little uh, pen that slides in there like this. You'll see it in a minute. Now, usually you'd want to do this on a clean bench, but I don't really have a clean bench, so. We're just doing whatever here and don't mix your shift forks up kind of want to lay them out where you know where they go or you can number them remember which one goes where what they look like okay now what we're looking for is three uh three dowel pens get them out of there i don't see them yet i see them down in there but they're not coming loose they're coated in gear oil there so Wash those off and see if I can get them to move. These 
spray a little cleaner on here. There's one. That's one little pen there. And one more. Three. Three pens out. I'm going to go ahead and throw those in my bucket so we don't lose them. Feels like we got some wear on the, maybe a groove one on the shift drum there. I've run into this before where the shift drum's cut. I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, that thing's tight, man. Can't move it now. It should move nice and easy inside the shift forks, but it didn't. We probably got some hard spots in the shift drum there, and probably in the shift forks too. Got a piece of metal in there or something. Or the shift drum's just worn. Like I said, I'll show you in a minute. You look at all these grooves, really good. Really need to look at that close, and see if there's any gouges out of that groove. Worn spots where it's catching up. Your fork actually looks good. We're going to check it with a straight edge. I don't really see any weird areas except for down here on the, the far side for the theft. Actually, I'm wrong. I do have some layer. This is this is first second here. Right there is first and second. What I got going on here with this this gear, right? This shift fork. It is going to need a shift fork. I don't know if you can see it or not. Got a nice groove worn in this side here. Feel it? I can feel it with my thumbnail. So. Needs it needs at least a shift fork.
So we know that, that shift fork screwed up. Well, since we know that's screwed up, we need to look at the that's a dog right there, and then it goes into a pocket. I don't know if you'd be able to see that or not. Put that off there. No, this is dog the dog right there. Well, I'll have to pull the rest of these gears off of here. Bearings feel all right. Bearings are good and tight. You can tell that by just giving them a shake. Doesn't have any weird noises in the bearings. Now to take this off, we you know that's main shaft. Take these off all the way. You need to, uh, if you're pulling the counter shaft out, I'm not. But, or I might have to. There's a torque torque said bolt right here. You need to pull that out, and then press and press press the main shaft and the counter shaft out kind of together. But I'm just doing as little disassembly as possible, and we'll see how it goes. I'll be able to get this gear off and slide this other dog out of here. Other shift gear, which is right here. We do have a little roundness on the on the dogs here, very very slightly, which is right on right. Let me show you on this one. It's easier to see. What you're looking for is any uh, roundness on these gears here. That one actually does have a little roundness on it, very very slightly. Not enough to make a difference, really. What you're looking for is when the gears go together, you're looking at gear engagement as far as how they go when you actually turn the shift rod while holding the fork. You see how much gear engagement you got between the, between the different sets of dogs there. They're not really very adjustable on a four speed on a five or on a five speed on a four speed is very critical and a super adjustable. So you get different different size shift forks which don't really apply to this thing on a five speed. You don't have that problem. So with the five speed, they really dumb it dummy down the transmission setup process. Speed's a lot harder. You got standard shift fork. You got a plus shift fork, a minus shift fork, then you can actually move the shifter plate in and out by shimming it. And then the other one is the stops for the Paul carrier. You can grind the stops to get to get more gear engagement. But we're not going into that. I'm just I'm just mentioning it. So I'll pull this thing the rest of the way apart here. Probably not tonight. I'll probably do that tomorrow. I can really pull this gear out of here and really look at it. But at the very least, I need a shift fork for first, second gear. And that's it for tonight. I'm going to go drink some coffee and eat a little snack. That's your inside there. Now on the 04 and later. Same transmission setup pretty much, except you can't actually take it apart. You got to pull the engine out and split the cases to get the transmission out. Other than that, it's identical. Got your counter shaft bearing here, main shaft, or uh, not your main shaft bearing. This one over here, that's your uh, shift drum. Goes in there. That's your main drive gear right there. Really, that's about it. They did on uh, 04 and up. They basically enclosed this in uh, one area here. So you still have separate transmission fluid and engine oil still separated, but there's no way to get the transmission out, which is kind of a bummer. Long time ago, when somebody was, I, think, I don't forget who was making it, they made a six speed transmission for a sportster. Very expensive.
very expensive proposition putting the five, six speed in there, but it worked. And that's, that's a long time ago. I want to say that transmission was $3,600 or $3,700. That's just for the transmission. That's not including labor or anything else putting it in. But that's it for this. I'll tear this thing apart tomorrow and look at these, look at the gears on it. So you can look for that one. I'm going to go drink some coffee, eat a snack, and edit some videos. Everybody take care. Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, all that stuff. And uh, I'll let you know how it goes here.